Namaste, my friends. My name is Daryl, and welcome to Safe Living. In this episode, we're going to be talking about wood blocking and plywood reinforcement for grab bars. So let's get going. Our agenda, we're going to cover uh, what are the ways that we can reinforce a wall for grab bars. Then we're going to talk about wood blocking and plywood reinforcements. I'm going to give some examples of blocking that I've put in some projects that I've done. Where do we put the blocking? How do you plan ahead for blocking? Um, I'm going to go over a quick high speed video that I did on a grab bar test using blocking and we're attaching the grab bar to that. Then we're going to talk about ADA standards. And then the last one is potential placement areas for blocking. This picture here, this is actually my test system for when I'm testing grab bars. This is a two by four frame structure. And this is actual blocking here. So this is a two by six that I'm using and I've screwed it through the side, took pocket holes with my Craig jig, reinforced it. And this one I actually, so this one I put in first, screwed on both sides. Then I put this one in, screwed it, and then pocket the, the Craig Jig holes. So, but this is actual blocking. And really the intention of this is to hold extreme high weight loads, uh, whether it's cabinets or whether it's grab bars, toilet paper holders, microwave ovens, whatever it is, um, that's really the intention of the blocking. And then another way to resupport a wall um, is plywood. And this I would put on the back wall or the side wall of a tub, and then put your Dura rock over top of it or your um, water resistant sheet rock, whatever you're using. But that's another way. This way, it doesn't matter um, where you're gonna put your grab bar in a shower, a plywood reinforcement's gonna give you the most coverage. And this, as long as you're at the right height, then later on, you know where it's at. You, it's it's a great, great solution. Now we're just going to give you some examples. This is actually uh, my shower. Um, it's a big walk-in shower. This is five foot by nine. I planned for this, but I even put a four by four post in the middle because I'm tying it into my bench because I do not want this wall to move. There will not, there is not a shower door here. All I do is have glass up top. But here I plan for blocking behind the, the shower benches, the, even though there are no grab bars there right now, I've got it in there for the future. And then on both sides of my wall, I do have grab bars on both sides of this one on one side, one on here, and then on the other side. But most importantly, it's planning ahead for where you're going to put your blocking. And that's what this is. And even on this side, when I was done, I did put a half inch plywood over this side because this is the entrance coming in from our door and I wanted to have the flexibility to do whatever I wanted. In this example here, um, this is using the weedy board wall system. I have showers on both sides, but you can see here I have blocking here for the grab bar for the toilet and also for, uh, this is for toilet paper dispenser. And then on the other side, I also have blocking going all the way around and we'll also have them coming down this wall as well. So even though there was no grab bars put in here, um, it's just planning ahead for it if, if I wanted to do it. And then here's another example of one that I did. Uh, this was my mother-in-law's half bath. Um, so there is no shower here, but I just wanted to be able to in the future before I closed up the wall, if I needed to put a grab bar, everything was there and ready to go. Where do we want the blocking to go in our home? I found this great article. Uh, and again, if you take a picture of the QR code, this was an article that was written back in 2007. But by far, this is the best article that I found that really covers the blocking as it goes through the entire home. Uh, and again, the QR code is going to is going to take you there. But again, this is just some examples in a kitchen. I'm not here to talk about the kitchens right now, but they talk about the fire code blocking there. But let's go to the bathroom section, which I think is the most important. The ADA has already established a standard out there in terms of where you want the height of your grab bars. And those grab bars should be placed anywhere between 33 and 36 inches off of the ground. 
So as long as your blocking covers that area, you're good. And then it even talks about uh, toilet paper holders. Here's where you can put blocking under your toilet. And as we go to the next page, they're even talking blocking for sconces, for lights, for more towel bars to hold up a pedestal sink. So just take a look at this QR code and get a, a real good understanding what blocking it does for your home. You know, this isn't a regular room. This shows you in the stairwell what you can use it for. But I just wanted to share that information. Planning ahead and new construction, as I mentioned, when you're remodeling a bathroom, you should always put blocking in, even if you're not ready for it. One day in the future, if somebody needs it, it's there. And again, it's very inexpensive to do it. It just takes a little bit more time. And the same goes for building a new home. Blocking should always be put in. And if you take a look at that article, it even talks about why so many contractors don't put them in. So adding blocking, you know, where do you add it? And we're going to talk about how ADA provides standards for grab bar placements to give you an understanding of where you should put it. This is the test apparatus that I mentioned that I'm using for testing grab bars and anchors and things like that. But there's a scale here and as I connected to a scissor jack and as I pull the pressure down, it's applying weight or pull force on here. And really, ADA standard says that you want to have minimum 250 pounds strength for a grab bar. And what I'm doing here is over this quick video, you'll see this grab bar starting to flex as the force is downward force is being applied. And this is run over a 30 minute time. And I just quickly did a time lapse study on it. So this grab bar actually failed because the structural integrity broke. And when you disconnect the chain, it actually just flops around. But we're going to talk about that in another video. The ADA guidelines, if you take a picture of this QR code, it's going to take you there. And in this section, we're focused on section 609, which is the grab bars. And as I mentioned earlier, with 604.5 grab bars over toilets, they tell you, again, 33 to 36 inches high is where they want them, okay? Here, they want the grab bar centered to the toilet. You want 12 inches minimum on this side, 24 inches on the transfer side. Here we go, 12 inches from the back wall, 54 inch maximum. So they want a 42 inch bar here and a 36 inch bar there. But if you know ahead of time, this is where you put your blocking before you close up your walls. They even have guidelines on where toilet paper dispensers should be held. So again, these are toilet paper dispensers that are out there that also grab bars. This one just lifts up. You put the toilet paper on there. These QR codes will take you there. These are just recommendations. So with the ADA, we don't need to follow this in res re residential, but it is a great guide to go to just to be able to have an understanding of where they recommend things to be at. So this is just regular bathtubs. Again, they recommend two bars in commercial. Even I go to a hotel, I don't, I don't ever see this. So, and this is ADA standards. Um, and then, so this is with, uh, this is baths with removable um, in-tub seating. So they even show you how you put a bar in the back. But again, great way to get an understanding of where to put your blocking. And this grab bar shows for showers and roll-on showers. And lastly, the shower seats. Um, and with shower seats, it's where are you gonna put these blocking in for the shower seats? I put in several of these and I've put in blocking and no matter what I've done, the force that people will put down on this seat when they sit, uh, if they have mobility issues, is gonna crack tile over time. But this QR code is gonna take you to some of the examples here. So this is just a real quick overview of the importance of um, blocking and wall reinforcement for grab bars. If you have any comments, questions, put them in the comment section. Subscribe for any future videos. Thank you very much for stopping by and we'll catch you on the next video. Take care.